we be doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 379. We're into the second week of July of 2024. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE had a big weekend in Toronto. Brought back my close personal friend Trish Stratus to host Money in the Bank. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they had their the NXT Heat Wave show followed on the weekend, and uh, this year's Money in the Bank winners were Drew McIntyre, who immediately cashed in on the on the same show and uh, was defeated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, this year's Miss Money in the Bank is Tiffany Stratton, um, as probably we intuited uh, last week. Um, any uh, just uh, big picture thoughts, and then we can quickly uh, talk about each individual match at the <clears throat> premium live event. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was pretty easy to watch show, as easy as modern Peacock WWE uh, shows ever are. In I... that there's lots of faffing about. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Five matches in three hours and fifteen minutes. Yeah, we there's a lot of faffing about that we didn't need. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> complaining about that is like, I don't know, <laughs> complaining about Raw being too long or something. It's true, and it's a problem, but it's not going to get fixed because it's doing what it's designed <laughs> to do. So it feels a little bit like you're just shouting into the void when you complain about these shows being too long and there being too much dicking around on them. Eventually, if we're going to get into Netflix, uh, I mean, I assume that eventually Netflix is going to buy this package when it uh, the Peacock deal runs mm-hmm. out after 2025 or whatever that is. Um, and then part of me is like, well, at least then the the I, I think we would still have to deal with it, though, because Netflix has a tiered uh, system now, too. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think. Maybe it would improve if uh, if they didn't have to run so many commercials during the show, but if they have a tier system now too, so I think we're just stuck with this. Yeah, this is uh, this is the future. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, um, as mentioned, um, show began with Drew McIntyre winning the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, according to Wikipedia, this match went 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, feels like we've had a lot longer ladder matches. I mean, mm-hmm. there were, it, it, yeah, we, there, we just said we've had a lot longer ladder matches on the show. But, uh, uh what did you think of the uh, men's money the make ladder match? Um, I it did nothing, nothing really stood out to me, like it was. You know, it, it was a ladder. Maybe it's just because the, as we'll get to in a moment, the women's match, someone nearly died on almost every big spot they did. Uh, this was this was fine per WWE ladder match standards, and the crowd was hot and into into it, so that helped. But uh, didn't stand out to me. I was glad Jey Uso didn't win. Yeah, I think I called that wrong. And uh, you called that right, and that uh, they just used this to uh, do another Phil and Drew angle. But uh, Sami Zayn beat Braun Breaker to retain the Intercontinental Championship. They just beat Braun clean. Preposterous, terrible. Not... <laughs> I like Sami Zayn. I like Sami Zayn a lot. Absolutely. Mm, this is puzzling. <laughs> At best, <laughs> it's, it's one of those decisions where you go, well, if you didn't want Sammy to lose the belt yet, that is that is completely fine. He's a fine intercontinental heavyweight <laughs> champion. Sure. Uh, give him let him be the champion for the year. I don't care. But then don't book him against a guy who is on the rise 
and is gaining momentum and really shouldn't lose right now. That's your answer. It's just to not book the match. But they did, and Sammy just beat them. So, uh, I mean, based on, on Raw the next night, they'll rematch at some point down the line here. But, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it. I don't think it helped Braun, and I don't really think it helps Sammy that much either because Sammy is at the level he's going to be at. That that's uh, without question accurate. Uh, Sammy is not. Sammy is made. He is not going to be less over mm-hmm. uh, if he loses that match. And you're trying to elevate Braun. And I guess we're just not elevating him. I guess we're just not elevating anyone this year. That's fine. <laughs> um, but to your point, then yeah, why did he not wrestle? Why did Sammy not wrestle Giovanni Vinci or? Uh, Ludwig Kaiser. I think Vinci might be hurt, but uh, Lud- Lud- Ludwig Kaiser or Otis or mm-hmm. <laughs> literally anyone else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. What's Omos doing? Yeah, I... Get so... Sammy a big stinky giant to fight. Be great. Sounds great, particularly if if Sammy is going to be part of um. This the bloodline war that that, that's Mm. brewing here. I could see. Could you see Sammy teaming with on uh, on Team Roman's bloodline here at some point? That seems like a a likely uh, a likely eventuality with with Jay being like the peacemaker to get them on the same page. Yep. It's it's very evident. Roman Reigns is going to be a gigantic baby face. Mm -hmm. Gigantic. Gigantic, like ten years too late. <laughs> it's a shame the old guy didn't live to see it. <laughs> he fell down an elevator shaft <laughs> onto some bullets. <laughs> but yes, Rowan will finally be a massive, big time baby face that yeah. people want to cheer. Yeah. Uh, Damian Priest kept the World Heavyweight Championship over Seth Rollins. And Drew McIntyre, after McIntyre cashed in to make it a three-way, and uh, rest in peace, <laughs> Drew, uh, CM Punk. Hey, stop it if you've heard this before. CM Punk interfered and cost Drew McIntyre the match. And uh, and yeah, that's uh, that was it. So Rollins can't challenge for the title as long as Priest has it. And they're at least shooting the initial angles. For Damian Priest versus Gunther at SummerSlam uh-huh. for the World Heavyweight Championship, well, that ma- that match sounds fascinating. Agreed. I will say they did do a bit on Raw Monday where Priest was like, "I don't care what we what gentlemen's agreement we had. You got screwed, and I'll if you want to fight again after SummerSlam, I'll." I guess he didn't specifically <laughs> word by word say, "I'll put the title on line against you anyway." He he kind of did. I, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. He, yes. uh, they immediately went back on their yeah. stipulation by, <laughs> by saying it was just a gentleman's agreement. So I guess it wasn't actually written into the fine print of the contracts that they no doubt signed before having their, uh, their wrestling competition. Sure. Uh, Priest. I don't know. He doesn't feel all that over for uh, being the top champion on a brand to me. Like the uh, third most fourth most over guy in his own faction. I I I don't know. Well, he's not as over as Dom. He's not over as Rhea. Yeah, third, maybe. He's probably more over than than wife guy Finn Balor at this point. <laughs> he gets more to do at the very least. Yeah. More uh, over than Carlito. I'll give him credit for that. Oh Lord. <laughs> Carlito, you pointed out to me this week on Raw, Carlito and Braun Strowman doing spots together. <laughs> so <laughs> where they, sad. Where they had to run around the, on the floor. <laughs> like Carlito's just like 45 and the biggest he's ever been and clearly just doesn't have great cardio. Right. And even still, he was having to literally stop moving so that Braun could catch up to him on that little run around the ring they always make Braun do, even though Braun hasn't been able to run since 2017. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They hired him back just to run. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like that's all he's done since he's been back. 
He he runs around the ring like a choo choo. They That's... won't even give him the choo choo noise back. Look, the old man has done a lot of bad things. That was a good thing that the old man did. <laughs> One of the funniest. That's like the only thing I remember liking from the uh, <laughs> the COVID era of, of the World Wrestling Federation was Braun and his little choo choo noise. <laughs> the Biden era of the Vince McMahon. <laughs> of it took me in raw uh-huh uh-huh mm. so uh we're getting drew and punk drew was uh drew crashed the post show he made poor jackie redmond feel for her lo- uh, fear for her life according to adam pierce adam pierce the nicest guy in wrestling dragged into <laughs> the uh non non adam cole division uh adam pierce dragged into the wrestling war was was a uh, humorous to me but uh he uh, is gonna. He he suspended Drew McIntyre for crashing the post show, mm-hmm. and then the very next uh, two days later on Raw, he uh, invited Drew McIntyre to Raw <laughs> to to discuss whether or not he could do business. I think was the phrase that they used. Mm-hmm. So uh, interesting. Um, feels like I don't know what you can intuit from their booking anymore, but. Maybe this match is happening at SummerSlam the first week of August. Maybe we're just going to keep shooting angles for Drew and Punk uh, until uh, the, the Lord returns. Until morale improves. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope we're getting to the match. And obviously that'll depend on 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 Phil's wing there. Like It'll depend on if he's ready. Um, but, I mean, he's doing physical things. So it feels like, well... You'd think a guy of his talent and a guy of Drew's talent could smoke and mirrors it enough to get through a match. Although we know Phil doesn't like to work hurt. Yes. Uh, that is one of his bugaboos. Although he was more vocal about that when he had another place to go. So maybe true. he would work hurt now. Um, also true. But yeah, I hope they, they're getting to the match soon and that Phil is healthy because... You know, I I really liked that WrestleMania angle they did together. And now I've seen it four more times. And, you know, crowd still goes crazy for it every time. You know, Drew's probably as over as he's ever been in the company as a heel. And, you know, Punk is still mega over whenever he comes out. So it's clear the audience is still enjoying it. But it, uh, it's feeling like I'm... I've just... I've seen this this episode before. So I would very much like to get to the part where these guys have a wrestling match now. That's fine. Well, uh, women's money, the make ladder match. We touched on this briefly. Tiffany Stratton won the briefcase. Um, everyone had their moment in this match, except maybe Naomi. <laughs> um, <laughs> who's, and it's not Naomi's fault. Naomi is just washed. She's absolutely washed. She's washed. Uh, and her more importantly, her spirit has been broken. Well, yeah, they beat her. They signed. They re-signed her just so they could beat her every chance they could get. Yeah. And uh, then wondered why Mercedes didn't want to go back. They knock a murder. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good way to put it. They for uh, sure when they thought they might be able to sign someone else and use her as leverage. Yep. And then they beat her repeatedly as soon as that was no no longer the case. Yep. Uh, I could do the uh, the Stefan uh, Stefan Stefan SNL a uh, bit here talking about this match. This <laughs> this match had everything. It had Michinoku drivers on ladders. <laughs> it had a ridiculous stunt bump by Chelsea Green mm-hmm. off the top of a ladder through two tables on the floor, and the tables like I I th- it seems like she's fine. I would have stacked like four tables. I would have had the two that she went through, but then I would have put two more on top of that because she just flew on the top of the ladder and, and a table, two tables broke her fall, but it was just one layer of tables. Anyway, uh, I, they know what they're doing. I guess, I guess, but um, this match was madness. Uh, uh, we had Zoe Stark doing her one of her her, her flips directly onto her head onto a ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lyra Valkyria almost killed herself. Uh, Eo Sky was doing crazy Eo Sky ladder things. Tiffany was doing moonsaults off the post. 
this match ruled. It was dangerous. If you don't like it because it was dangerous, uh, I can respect that. But just as a spectacle, there was an element of danger to this that I haven't felt watching uh, wrestling in a long time. This restored the feeling. <laughs> and uh, this is one of my favorite matches of the year. Well, I can't add a lot to that. Uh, should let you go second. Um, no, yeah, it was it was it was entertaining and it was a little bit terrifying. Uh, and yeah, it. I, 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 yeah, I can't add a lot to to what you said. It was I liked it, yes, and a part of why I liked it is because it felt so out of control and like someone might die. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, doesn't look like we had any serious injuries afterwards. So if you need that to make yourself feel better about enjoying a match, you've got that. Um, and yeah, they they picked somebody and they're hopefully going to push her, push her to the title now. So uh, we talked about it. I thought maybe Chelsea would get it as sort of a gag. Uh, and they chose not to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, Tiffany is someone that I would push. And, uh, also if I were Charlotte Flair, I would be just, just have a, a frozen aluminum baseball bat, just ready to go <laughs> when I get back, just aimed right at Tiffany's kneecaps. She's doing moonsaults off the post. She's doing Charlotte spots. Like you gotta, if you are Charlotte Flair, you either got to get on the other show or you got to you got some work to do here. <laughs> All right. You got to be getting, harding her. You, gotta, you better get Paul's ear and you better get in Bruce's ear and you better, and you better, <laughs> you better take out her, her kneecaps. More than fair. Uh, Bloodline beat Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton in this, uh, the six man tag main event of this show. Uh, biggest news, maybe Tonga Loa. Messed up a low blow, but it may not have been his fault because he hit his head on the announce table doing spots and immediately went into the fencing pose. Uh, it was clearly concussed. Yes. So uh, that's maybe the worst thing to come out of this. But uh, the bloodline gets big win heading into uh, SummerSlam where uh, the reports are we're getting Cody Rhodes and Sol Skoa, even though it should be Cody Rhodes and Jacob Fetu. <laughs> uh, agreed on all points. Uh no one likes making fun of Tongaloa more than myself. Sure. But in this case, yes, you could cut him a little bit of slack that he was clearly had had his brain scrambled by the uh, by the dive a few minutes earlier. Did take a really good bump on the RKO right after that, as you pointed out. So um, he recovered nicely. But uh, yeah, match I thought was really fun. Um, not, maybe not like pay per view main event quality, but. Uh, it was it was a it was a hot six man tag with a bunch of stars in it. So, uh, and then also uh, and also and also Tamatanga, yeah. Um, and Sol Sokoa. Uh, so four stars in this match. No, uh, yeah, and they did what I would do if you're seriously going to try to convince people that Solo could win the title, which is to have him hit Cody with his move and pin him. Yep. So. Uh, I still don't think Solo is going to win the title. I think I think people are all kind of eyeing SummerSlam for the big Roman return now. But uh, in the immediate, you've got to spend the next few weeks trying to get people into the mindset that uh, that Solo was a serious threat to Cody's World Championship. So, yeah, they did it, they did it well. Everybody worked really hard. had a had a really good match. Jacob Fatu looked awesome. Um, Kevin Owens looked great in that match, and yeah, it's just, just really, really good. Uh, it's really hard, like, to not just get lost in the excitement of a of a good old six man tag. That's my most uh, old timer cornet pilled thought of the the night. It's like sometimes you just a, a good main event six man tag just works, and uh, this one did, and they worked the crowd really well, and it was the right finish for where they're going. So, I mean, the right finish considering that they're not going right to Jacob Fatu. <laughs> killing Cody right. Rhodes in two minutes and taking the belt. Right. Uh, they followed up Money in the Bank with Heat Wave the next night. Uh, Big news coming out of that. Ethan Page wins the NXT championship mm -hmm. by fluke. 
Mr. Soul, <laughs> Mr. Charisma. Uh, another candidate for a nicest guy in wrestling, non Adam Cole division, <laughs> but uh, Ethan Page. Don't always feel we're, we are simpatico as to what we're. Uh, um, uh, I mean, one of us is always right. Thank goodness. Sure, sure. But but uh, we're not always simpatico on what we want out of our wrestling. But I think we both agree. Ethan Page <laughs> is not exactly what we're looking for <laughs> out of our wrestling, let alone as uh, the champion of a brand. Uh, but hey, uh, Trick Williams can chase now again, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Ethan Page gets to... Uh, Say he was world champion of the developmental brand, mm-hmm. and uh, they get to stick it to uh, AEW. Yeah, everybody wins. Um, yeah, Ethan Page is a guy who I'm always like, he could be on the show. Like he could, he could be in a tag team or a battle royal or something. <laughs> um, set up the ring. Yeah, you know, hard worker. He could be a referee. But when <laughs> you have looked. <laughs> Uh, but when you have looked at him compared to the other talent on the show, and it's a little bit different now because he's in there with a bunch of like fitness models and D1 <laughs> athlete washouts. So he is a somewhat polished professional wrestler. <laughs> so he does stand out a little bit more in NXT maybe. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's fine as a guy to, you know, Again, in the old days, be like, all right, him and Trick would go on the road together for six months, and then they'd do the rematch, and Trick would win the belt back. But yeah, I don't know. They'll do the the coconut loop in Florida if they're still doing those shows at all. And uh, yeah, he's a good guy that can work with all. He, he can he can teach everyone how to do holds and and uh, and and work work the leg and all the other things that people envision when they when they. Uh, uh, say the word psychology over and over again. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know. Good for him. This seems like his ceiling, though. <laughs> like, I I don't disagree with you. I I don't think he or Sean Spears feels out of place as a uh, as a heel act on the developmental brand. Like that's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Hendry appeared. Uh, in the main event of uh, NXT this week, uh, teaming with Trick. Um, still not sure exactly what to make of this Impact NXT alliance. Not sure what Impact gets out of it. WWE gets a free look at talent that they're going to sign. <laughs> I was going to say, the moment, they, the moment they can. They get the meme guy who is juicing all their socials numbers. Yeah, and uh, and the women's champion who Paul suddenly became very interested in when she completely changed her physique. Yep, and Impact gets Tatum Paxley. They 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 get the fountain of charisma that is Charlie Dempsey. <laughs> Someone pointed this out. Charlie Dempsey talks like Regal, but he doesn't have the British accent. Correct. It's weird. He has a weird voice. Yes, he um, yes, <laughs> he's the voice of someone who went to school in the United States of America, but was raised in a household with British parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dangerous thing you ever heard in your life. All right. Uh, Rhea Ripley came back on Raw. That was the big angle at the end of Monday Night Raw. Uh, Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio are still doing really awkward and uncomfortable uh angles mm-hmm. and uh Rhea came back to uh confront the the couple that isn't a couple but might be a couple but probably isn't a couple but they want to be a couple but they maybe don't want to be a couple uh Rhea's back and uh there we go um they did a mixed tag with Ray and Zelina against uh live and dom and dom was th- insisting throughout the show that he did not uh want this match and then he was celebrating very much as if he wanted the match and uh yeah and then Rhea came back and Rhea and lives the match 
not sure again, not sure if it's SummerSlam because the last report we had was that uh, Rhea would probably not be cleared in time for SummerSlam. But uh, you pro- probably don't bring her back there unless she's somewhat close to returning for the match. So Rhea came back, uh, crowd went nuts. Uh, Rhea and Liv and Dom uh, have their ankle. All of this makes me uncomfortable. What do you think of it? <laughs> I don't think it's particularly good. Um, yeah, it's look. People reacted big when when Rhea came back. She still is very over. Um, I am mildly okay with it in the sense that for the first time since Rhea got injured, it appears there is, is a direction for the women's champion on Raw. Sure, that will end in a wrestling match. I should say the direction has been she's trying to. Uh, <laughs> seduce young young Dominic Mysterio for a yeah. married man whose girlfriend is also married. Yes, but uh, and uh, yeah, so I guess that's that's the intrigue. It's Dom is Miss Elizabeth, and they'll do the match, <laughs> and he'll be in a neutral corner, and it'll be who is he, who is he going to cheat for or with? Uh, will be the will be the storyline, I guess. Which is it's it's fine. <laughs> It's 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 not what I would do, and I wouldn't do it in the way they're doing it. But, um, yeah, it's Rhea is really over, and this clearly going to be positioned as the baby face, which should also be interesting because now that means Liv has to like beat her up, like get heat on her, um, theoretically, which sounds funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. I it's, it's not something that. I particularly care to see, but I'm mostly just uh, looking forward to uh, there there being a wrestling match at the end of this for the women's the women's world champion for the first time uh, since she won the belt in a uh, oh no she didn't win in the battle royal Becky won in the battle royal and then Liv beat her like two weeks later right so yeah it would be it would be nice I think for like two wrestlers to feud over the belt but instead we can. We can we could do this instead, I guess. Sure, sure. Other big news coming out of uh, the World Wrestling Entertainment this week: uh, Stephanie Vacker signed, and uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, but uh, AEW each AEW announcer also pronounced it differently. So Stephanie Vacker signed off from under the noses of AEW. Uh, she had dates this weekend coming up with uh, mm-hmm. CMLL New Japan Fantastica Mania in uh, San Jose. Um, she had a singles title and a tag title in CMLL that they stripped her of. Everybody seems upset that she has uh, pulled out of her uh, of her dates. Um, WWE announced her signing this week, mm-hmm. and uh, it's typically not their MO. Um, I guess it is their MO. I don't know. <laughs> like, they used to make a big show of saying that people can finish up their dates before they start, correct? It's not really always the case, correct? See, also Co- Alberto Del Rio never losing the AAA title during one of his comebacks, even though he Correct. he received assurances from WWE that he'd be allowed to come back. Correct. Or they when they um, wouldn't let Carl Anderson go drop the never title yes. in uh, in like October. Yeah, they and needed so, him for a Saudi show. So right. So then he had to go get uh, he had to go back in in January and, and drop it. Um, yeah, really weird. But uh, Stephanie signs she's good. Um, AEW probably has to feel um, victimized. CMLL is saying that, uh, at least uh, behind the scenes, they're saying that this is kind of the first time WWE's ever come after us this way. But hey, yeah, uh, it, it's because of who your business partners with. No other reason. I don't think WWE's trying to uh, dominate. Uh, uh, trying to put CML out of business, but I don't know. 
uh, any thoughts? I've been rambling here for quite some time about this thing that is pretty cut and dry, but I, I, I don't know how else to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting story just because of how sudden <laughs> everything is. She was literally on an AEW slash New Japan slash CMLL joint show, th- you know, two 10 days before. Yes. And uh, and then all of a sudden she's gone. Like the fact that it the fact that it moves so quickly, the fact that she is she was seemingly willing to burn the bridge of the CMLL. I mean, again, it's probably low risk because especially it seems that happens pretty frequently in Mexico because the feeling is if you burn the bridge with one, you just go to the other place. Like if she does end up washing right. out of WWE, AAA is still going to be there. There's Indies there. There's Conan's uh, crash promotion. There's plenty of places in Mexico that will she can still work if she does end up coming back to the scene. Um, and then also, yeah, WWE probably was pretty hard line on on the start date for that reason. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. So I mean, look, this is an example of why having multiple players in the u.s wrestling scene and the global wrestling scene is a good thing for the talent um because she was she's been working in mexico a while and you know she's not she's i think she's 31 she's not you know she's not the usual age that people start at the performance center at these days um so this is a good chance for her to make money and to to do it uh, for the biggest wrestling company in the world so it's it's good for her um yeah i mean it's 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 a shame if AEW made her an offer too what well, that's that's gonna happen right it's we just are uh, uh, we are about to experience it the other way with ricochet declining wb's re-sign offer assuming he got one and joining AEW. so it's good for the talent um it's I can understand why it's maybe shocking and disappointing if you are really dialed into that CMLL scene that she just left under cover of darkness like this. But uh, overall, yeah, it's it's good for her. And she'll be in a place. They'll push her. They'll want to make a point of pushing her, as we've just discussed, with someone far less talented than her, like Ethan Page. So they'll want to make a point of making a big splash with her. And yeah, that's it's it's good it's good for her i i understand if you have reservations about how someone who doesn't speak english super well and historically if you look at most of the latino people currently on the rosters in wwe well you you get put in one faction or the other don't you but uh yeah so i can understand having a little hesitancy if you are an existing fan of hers and her work but overall it seems like yeah it's a wrestling war people get signed out from under the other companies and this will probably keep happening both ways as, uh, as things continue and as contracts come up. So she had a WWE tryout six or seven years ago in Mm -hmm. uh, Chile, her native Chile Mm -hmm. and uh, they passed on her, but she has seven more years of experience and, uh, Mercedes on a uh, Kurt Angle like run here of gonna of getting people signed. I predict <laughs> seems that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only other note here: uh, WWE is running shows in Mexico this weekend. <laughs> they sure are, and uh, Stephanie could potentially be on those shows, or they'll at least uh, like do an angle with her. They could do the thing they... like what they did with uh, when they had Hogan go to Japan to announce Kenta signing. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Brought out Ichiban as Hogan san to to, yeah. to to christen Kenta the next great Japanese superstar. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> um immediately came to mind as soon as you were talking about as soon as we were talking about uh what, <laughs> what they could do with her. I'm like, hey, remember that time they sent Hogan to Japan? I did not remember it was for Kenta. Yes. That's that's hilarious. Isn't it? <laughs> I was thinking Nakamura for some reason. I was like, no, it was Kenta. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> what do you think Kenta and Hulk Hogan talked about <laughs> in the elevator? <laughs> uh, Hiro Matsuda? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, Inoki. Giant Baba? Inoki-san? Yeah, of course. 
both yeah. both sat under the learning tree with Anoki san. So yeah. Uh AEW Dynamite this week that uh I think last week's was universally praised. This week's closing angle was universally praised. I haven't really um examined much of the discourse about this week's show online. So I don't know what the uh, what the word on the street is, but um Brian Danielson won the Owen Hart tournament on the men's side. Mariah May won the Owen Hart tournament on the women's side and then immediately turned on Tony Storm in a super memorable, super bloody angle. And uh, we're on our way to All In with Swerve Strickland defending the world title against Brian Danielson and uh, Tony Storm defending the women's world title against Mariah May. Uh, Very interesting. What did you think of Dynamite this week? Yeah, up and down show. Um, when you start, well, like I said, you technically start with started with an Osprey promo, which I did not think was good. Um, uh, wasn't awful. Uh, I thought his delivery was okay, but the content of it just not not very good. There's some weird meta line about how the bidding war didn't go well for MJF because <laughs> Tony would rather spend money on guys like Will Osprey. It's like what? But MJF did resign. So right. I guess the what implication that Will Ospreay is making more money than MJF. I see. Which, what a baby face, <laughs> if that's the case. Um, right. So I didn't right. like that promo, uh, but it wasn't like earth shatteringly bad or anything. It just wasn't wasn't great. They announced they're doing Osprey versus MJF next week for the big Dynamite 250 show. Um, and, but other than that, they went right into the Danielson Hangman match, which I thought was great. Um, Double J got his big moment, <laughs> uh, heroically uh, upholding the rules and and counting the pin for Danielson, and then uh, and then bringing the trophy and and Martha Hart into the ring to celebrate. Um, thought that was all really well done. Uh, I thought for sure we were going to cut backstage and see Hangman murdering Jeff Jarrett right afterwards, but I guess based on what they were going to do at the end of the show, they figured uh, don't do that yet if that is in fact coming. Um, yeah. And then I feel like there's just a bunch of stuff for a while. There was a Jericho Joe match that I thought was not very good. Um, and, and they did an angle where Jericho put uh, Samoa Joe on a forklift and then drove through uh, a sheet of drywall that apparently had been set up just for this angle. Mm-hmm. It looked so Mickey Mouse and Rinky Dink. Yes, it was and, trash. And this is to write Joe out while he goes and films that Twisted Metal show for Peacock again, apparently. But mm-hmm. um, that was terrible. Chris Jericho, go home. I was just thinking about that, too. I think I sent this as a message to you, but it's like, if you just took Jericho off these shows, they're so <laughs> instantly like, 30% less annoying and less of a slog to get through if there wasn't a 20 to 30 minute segment of television every week that's just full of Jericho. Um but alas. Uh yeah, the I I didn't think much of like the Mercedes and Brit they didn't really do anything. No. Like Mercedes kind of just came out and healed on the crowd for a second and then ran away when Brit came out. Yeah, they didn't have an. They had them both in the building, but they didn't have any idea of what they what they should do with them. Yeah, exactly. So, also Mercedes out there for her the saddest toast of all time. She was <laughs> toasting her double championship win with like a shot glass and a bottle of some liquor of some description, but not really recognizable as any liquor you've ever seen in your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like that angle. Yeah, not not good. And they had a random four way, uh, which is going to set up a <laughs> continental title shot. Who's getting the title? What title are they wrestling for? I uh, couldn't tell you. <laughs> Pac, Pac won it. I feel like they said international at some point, but also maybe they said continental at another point because I feel like they were talking about Okada during the match. Correct. Well, they called they nonsensically branded it like the global glory four way or something the old glory four way <laughs> the old oh, tremendous <laughs> and uh yeah they 
I swear. <laughs> Uh, uh, apparently it was an international, but yeah, it was an international title shot though. It, okay. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Particularly if MJF and, uh, uh, Osprey is a Wembley match, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then why are we taking the title? We're not going to take the, I don't know. It's stupid. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Cause they obviously, like we said, they are doing MJF and Osprey next week, which everyone would assume will be a bait and switch while they wait for the pay-per-view but right yeah um and then i guess in that case maybe osprey defends against Pac somewhere in the next few weeks between then and wembley whatever uh and then yeah the main event the match itself i didn't think was like great no. uh the... brian may is not a great worker no and I, i'm interested to see how it is when she gets to work heel now um, I don't, yeah, I don't think her, her baby face matches have been great. Yeah. Um, she had a good match with Sheeta, but Sheeta has good matches with everyone. So, sure. um, I don't think that's necessarily Mariah to Mariah's credit, but, um, yeah, the post, the post match was great. I thought one of the best, maybe the, maybe the best angle involving women that AEW has ever done. Um, Tony Storm loves this business and she took aspirin before the the segment if I had to guess because she did every trick <laughs> because when she ran that razor it was a faucet it was Eddie Guerrero and JBL it was just spewing <laughs> and uh and it was a very memorable visual they got Luther out there taking bumps for Mariah and uh yeah, it was it was an awesome segment. She took the shoe and and stabbed her in the head repeatedly with it. Yeah. Uh, and and Tony is like crying and wailing as it's happening. Like she doesn't just she didn't just like go dead like she was unconscious during it. Right. Which might have come off as hokey if it were any other character but Timeless Tony Storm. Right. Um so yeah, I thought it was incredible. Um Follow up will be important. We have never seen Mariah portrayed as like a serious heel in this company. Right. And we've talked about it. Tony has done a pretty good job of refining her character where she can do the wacky stuff that people like and still cut promos and have good matches. Yep. But, but we have not seen her have like a, a grudge match or a, a grudge feud in this character. So that will also be a test of her ability as well, I think. So follow-up will, of course, be key. But as an angle, I think it's one of the best things that's been on Dynamite all year. So um, coming up next week, as you mentioned, they have Dynamite 250. You have Swore Strickland versus Okada in a champion versus champion match where neither title's on the line. Uh, Mercedes Monet will defend the TBS championship in an open challenge against anyone except Britt Baker. And you have, as mentioned, uh, Will Ospreay versus MJF. Uh, they have Blood and Guts coming up the week after that. Uh, Team Elite is set with the Young Bucks and Okada and Jack Perry. And Hangman Page is caucusing with the uh, Team Elite, <laughs> even if he is uh, no longer a full-fledged member of the group. Right, like uh, like the leftists and centrists in France, they are they are they are caucusing together despite not being fully aligned. <laughs> yes, and then uh, the babyface team so far has Swerve and Mark Briscoe, and uh, presumably Darby, based on the end of Dynamite. Correct, correct. Uh, is John Mo is John Moxley quiet quit AEW? <laughs> uh, feels like it, huh? I thought maybe because they did that, they had that bit where like <laughs> Hangman was aggressively rude to Renee <laughs> on Wednesday. I was like, oh shit, maybe they're gonna do him and Moxley at Wembley because obviously they're not doing Swerve and Hangman at Wembley. All like, right. Well, he's gonna need a match. Yeah, Oxley hasn't had a program on this company in like a year. Uh, man, that that could work. I mean, they've wrestled a bunch before, but it would be kind of a role reversal with with Hangman as the bad guy and Mox 
you know, defending his lady's honor, um, potentially, but I don't know. <laughs> they got to fill out that team somehow. So it Mox would make sense if he's, if he's coming back, it would make <laughs> sense that he would be on team AW, but then again, it would have made sense that he would have been on team AW at the last, uh, time they did a match like this when they did, uh, the are- anarchy in the arena match. And he was not so, uh we'll see i guess <laughs> they're they they're it's bordering on um uh promotional malpra- malpractice what they what they have done with moxley and i don't know how much of it is just like okay you're not figured in the top picture right now so you can go to new japan you can go win the new japan title you can go do stuff and uh we're just kind of you're not figured in for this cycle so mm-hmm. we'll get you back we'll work you back in but yeah. uh, John Moxley shouldn't be that guy. <laughs> John Moxley should be cutting a promo and every single television show that they have. And I'm not the biggest fan of his in-ring work. Um, sure. But he's one of the best talkers they have. He's one of the best talkers in the world. And there's really just been no explanation as to why he's not involved in any of these storylines that involve like heel authority figures. It, it's so stupid. It's really bad. <laughs> and like the answer is likely he doesn't want to do this WWE bullshit. Like this right. 2018 WWE stuff that he tried to get away from. Right. Um, that's probably the actual real life answer. Right. Um, but yeah, as it stands, it's weird that it's never been addressed on camera. And it's weird that he hasn't been on television since he lost the IWGP belt at Forbidden Door. I mean, it's only been two shows, but four shows if you count collisions and right, even more if you count Rampage. But who does? Uh, <laughs> no. So uh, yeah, there's uh, certainly no. been a place for him to have a, a promo on one of these shows. I don't blame him for staying away from that collision that was going head to head with Money in the Bank. Max wasn't smart enough to keep himself off that show, but um yeah the rest of it it's just like I, I why yeah why hasn't he been why hasn't he been figured in again i'm sure there were some complications with him being the iwgp champion i'm sure new japan wanted to say and like who he was wrestling and whether or not the belt was going to be on the line and things like that but he's not the champion anymore so he should be back on tv and he should be in a program that matters and he should be talking all the time and as of now, he is not. So a fun thing to do um, when AEW runs a show in Canada is to see who's not on the card. <laughs> <laughs> so this week on Dynamite, we had a uh, Taz. They came up with some kind of storyline reason for like the Young Bucks banned him from the building or something. Uh, or Jericho banned him from the building or mm-hmm. like they can't even get their, their own. Well, Jericho asked the Bucks to ban him from the building. Why Christopher Terrific. Daniels can't just unban him from the building is not clear. Right. So Taz wasn't in Calgary. MJF did a pre-tape. MJF was not in Calgary. John Moxley, uh, Renee posting uh, videos of him on their couch at home uh, wrestling their daughter mm-hmm. while uh, Renee was in Calgary. So Mox was at home. MJF was at home. Taz was at home. Who has the stroke to get themselves um, unbooked from Canada shows so they don't have to go through customs? <laughs> At least Taz, MJF, and Moxley, we know. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, <laughs> it is well, fun to note that. Well, uh, Jamie Hader, Fightful had a, one of their word salad reports on her <laughs> this week. Uh, you uh, sent over a list of topics that you wanted to discuss, and so I was uh, doing a little bit of uh, due diligence on them uh, in preparation for this program, and I said, well, I spend $5 a month every month for Fightful Select. Let me go take a look and see what uh, Fightful Select is reporting here about Jamie Hayter. And it's just a bunch of word salad saying she was at a TV recently and had a physical, but... Everyone has been at TV recently to have a physical and uh, maybe someone pitched other talent, the idea of working with Hater, but uh, we really don't know. So Jamie Hater uh, is missed. 
and may or may not be coming back anytime in the year 2024. Well, there you go. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I, I thought no. based on the headline that it would have been yeah. a, bigger, a bigger, more you concrete would, story. You would think, uh, fight for select the worst five dollars I spend every month, <laughs> without question. <laughs> like you can discuss whether or not uh, F four W online is worth fourteen ninety nine a month, and please have that discussion. Uh, we are out now offering. Uh, a podcast only or a video only uh uh subscription price as well for 9.99 if you don't want you know all the words you just want the the podcast you can do that now mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. but but uh fightful selects 4.99 a month uh, without a doubt the worst money i spend every month well <laughs> please leave that in <laughs> will do it is a useless subscription anyway uh i guess sometimes if you want to see like oh uh, what does michael hayes do for his job and then you look at the smackdown <laughs> they do have a nice smackdown uh, run sheet afterwards where they're a format where they're like oh michael hayes produced the bloodline segment and it's like well whatever that means <laughs> sure. in that sense it's uh it's kind of worth four about four nine nine a month but if you're looking for uh, scoops about uh, uh, Jamie Hader, um, uh, you could you could spend your five dollars better elsewhere. All right. Well, that's my rant about uh, Fightful Select. Oh. There, uh, G1 is starting uh, here in about uh, eight days or so, seven or eight days, and um, boy, no uh, Tanahashi, no, no Yano. Yes, Yano. No, Yano. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, Ishii, who will apparently be just just hanging out in America this summer. He's on vacation. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, Naito, Shooter, Shingo, Sonata, Great Okan, Zack Saber, Gabe Kid, Evil, Jake Lee, Callum Newman. Is a block. B block is Goto, Fantasmo, Suji, Iwimura, Cobb, Hanare, David Finley, Ren Narita, Takeshita, and Oleg Bolton. Takeshita being in is interesting. Um, but um this uh this I I don't know that there's been a G1 with less buzz in the years that uh, I've been uh doing wrestling website work for a living. Yeah, maybe, maybe that maybe one of the COVID years, but even then, you still had like Okada and Jay White and Osprey in it. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, still had the residual popularity from like the Jericho Omega Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, this might be the saddest one. Uh, yeah. Hey, Doki is the uh, <laughs> IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Sure. It's a guy that's paid his dues, and so Absolutely. I kind of I, I respect that, and uh, he's earned a spot there. I'm not sure he should be the junior heavyweight champion. <laughs> I mean, at this point, if they're like if they're putting the belt on him because they're going to move Desperado and Hiromu up to heavyweight, great. Yeah, let Doki be the junior champion for ten years if you want. Sure. If, if you're getting uh, if you're getting that albatross away from from Hiromu and. And uh, and and SB, but yeah. Uh, overall, it's not a <laughs> it's not a move that like a healthy promotion makes, you know. No, like you check in on your buddy, he's not doing well. He's like, "Well, I've put the belt on Dookie," and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> better be checking in with you more often." <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, all oh. right. Well, um, is there anything else you have to cover here? No, I think that about covers all the, uh, the the news of the week. There we go. All right, everybody. Till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features.
everything is going great. It's fine that he called uh, two of his closest political allies by the names of his biggest political enemies <laughs> twice in one day. That's fine. This is supposed to be a weekly thing now or something like that. I guess he's he like on average has held fewer uh, press conferences than any president president since second term dementia Reagan. So <laughs> that I guess I mean, if if you're staying in and you're going to try to convince people, <laughs> I guess you got to get yourself out there and start answering questions um uh you're right about tony santander as it turns out he goes to the all-star game as an injury replacement Mm -hmm. um when did this become the pro bowl where no one wants to go and play in it like i don't blame these guys i would rather have four days off also but Mm -hmm. but uh I guess there has always been some element of this, particularly if you've gone multiple times to an all-star game, but I don't remember this being like uh, the Pro Bowl before where everybody tries to get out of it. Yeah, it feels like there's like a more, I don't know if it's like a more superstitious element to it now about like not wanting, I mean, some of these guys I'm sure are banged up, like you said, and just want the time off, but it just feels like, I don't know, people buy into the, like the you're gonna slump after you go. I mean, that's maybe that's more directed to like the home run derby stuff, but right. I don't know. Yeah, it is interesting. Like it felt like unless someone was like currently unable to play baseball, <laughs> if you were selected, you went, and that's definitely not the case anymore. Right. Oh, Glenn Powell update. I I watched uh, uh, his Netflix movie that came out. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I think I I see what people see, I think. <laughs> like you I'm not see, you see a smooth wet boy. <laughs> I see a, he's still a smooth wet boy. They try to like make him a nerd in that movie. And that's impossible because he's like, you know, he's got that giant head and the very square jaw. And it's very and he just looks like a guy who would be in modeling. Like if he wasn't a good enough actor to be in movies, he'd just be a model. So it's like that's distracting, but uh, he mm. he tries real hard to be like a weird, a weird nerd for for a bit of that movie. And it's like, OK, he tries a little bit harder than someone who looks like that has to try. And I I appreciate I appreciate that at the very least. That's that's your Glenn Powell update for for this week's show. Thank you. Hopefully a weekly segment. <laughs> Glenn Powell Observer Radio. <laughs> I try to keep on keeping on.